so this video is kind of coming out a week late, but let's just pretend that that did not happen, and let's just pretend that the news that everyone already knew was just announced. The Alfa Romeo lineup is now complete, and the final piece of the puzzle that is the 2022 grid has been put in place. The Alpine Academy driver Huan Yuzhou will become the first Chinese driver in Formula 1, and whilst this is a landmark event for both China and F1, there's no doubt that there are a lot of questions to be answered about Huan Yuzhou getting the seat over someone like Oscar Piastri or Callum Eilor. There's no shying away from the massive financial backing that no doubt helped him get into F1, but does Huan Yuzhou deserve a chance in Formula 1, and does he have the ability and potential to have a long-lasting career beyond his money? Before I really get into the Huan Yuzhou aspect, I really want to talk about the two other drivers really quickly in what I like to call the Alfa Romeo driver pyramid. First up is Antonio Giovinazzi. Now, this one is a hard one because I'm going to be sad to see Gio go. I'm a big fan of the Italian Jesus. He's a great character and I think having an Italian driver in Formula 1 is always good because that country has such a strong connection to the sport. In general, there's no doubt that he is a good driver, there's also no doubt that he has been very unlucky at points in his F1 career, and I am happy to see him still racing next year and moving over to Formula E, just a shame that he's literally going to one of the worst teams on the grid, but we move on. When the announcement was made, he put out a post on his Instagram and one of the things that he said was that in F1, when money rules, it can be ruthless. And whilst that statement in of itself is very, very true, that is not what has happened to Gio. Ultimately, as much as I like him, when you spend three full seasons in Formula 1 and fail to beat your teammate in every single one of them, you don't exactly have a leg to stand on and say that the only reason that you lost your seat is because someone else has got more money. After three seasons together, this is Gio's head-to-head -head stats against Kimi in terms of races, qualifying, and points. Now, as I'm recording this right now with two races to go in the 2021 season, they have been teammates for 56 Grand Prix. Now, I mean this with the biggest amount of respect to Kimi because he is the very definition of an F1 legend, but he is almost a decade past his prime and just because he is a world champion, that doesn't mean that Giovinazzi shouldn't be beating him after three years if he really thinks that he deserves to stay in Formula 1. Again, I understand that he's been unlucky at times, but after 56 races, that excuse starts to run pretty dry pretty quick, and on more than one occasion, even this season, he's bottled it multiple times when points were on the table. The last driver in this Alfa Romeo pyramid is Oscar Piastri. Now, I wanted to get this out of the way because this is actually a bigger discussion for the future, but yes. Oscar Piastri deserved this seat more than anyone else. He's a better driver in every measurable category than Huan Yuzhou, and if he goes on to win the Formula 2 title as a rookie after winning the F3 title the year before, that is a feat that has only been done by Charles Leclerc and George Russell. Oscar Piastri has world championship levels of potential, and although he will be the reserve driver for Alpine in 2022, that's not enough. This guy deserves to be in F1 more than anyone else. I just wanted to get that out of the way because although this video is about Huan Yu Zhou, don't think that I'm ignoring that there was a better driver that deserved it more. Unfortunately, this is one of those situations where even though Alpha were clearly looking for a new driver, Zhou was the option they went with because as a total package in terms of ability, potential, and financial backing, that tipped the scale over a driver like Piastri, and that's why he got the C. However, now that I've got that out of the way, although Huan Yu Zhou was not the most deserving driver of the C, that doesn't mean that in isolation he himself does not deserve at least one season in Formula 1. Now, in terms of how he compares to the other drivers that are already in Formula 1, I'm going to compare him to Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazpin because they spent multiple seasons together in Formula 2, and it gives us a rough comparison of how they stack up. 
Now, in 2019, they were all in their rookie season of F2, and it was Huan Yuzhou who comfortably beat the other two, finishing in 7th on 140 points, with Mick Schumacher down in 12th on 53 points, and Mazepin having a very poor rookie season down in 18th on only 11 points. However, the season later, it was a complete switch around. It was Mick Schumacher who of course was the F2 champion in 2020, finishing first on 215 points, and then Mazepin just ahead of Huan Yuzhou in sixth on 164 points compared to 151.5. Now, those are just the stats, but for anyone that actually watched F2 in 2020, you will know that he did also get a bit unlucky at times, like losing a feature race win whilst in the lead of the race in the very first race of the 2020 season in Austria due to an engine issue. That is a full 25 points gone in just the very first race of the season, and those 25 points would have not only meant that he would have finished ahead of Mazepin, but that, funnily enough, would have also put him just half a point behind Robert Schwartzman who finished in 4th. Those are just the tiny margins in motor racing and luck can play a huge part and overall, there's a lot of takeaways that you can make from his two comparable seasons with the two Haas drivers. Although he didn't have that mega second season jump, you could say that he's been the more consistent driver and for all that it's worth, across the two seasons he actually scored more total points than Mick and Nikita if you add up both 2019 and 2020. Now in his third season of Formula 2, he is a firm title challenger. He's currently second in the standings, 36 points behind Oscar Piastri, and that's with two rounds to go, which in Formula 2 still means there is six races left. Now, the fact that it has taken him three seasons to become a real title contender shows that he just isn't that very special level of talent who can jump from series to series and always be at the front. Also, having watched him, I do know that he does lack that ultimate, relentless consistency to fight for podiums in every single race, and he also does have the odd error in his driving as well. I do think, though, that perhaps having those three seasons to really mature in Formula 2, and then also having spent quite a bit of time with the Renault slash Alpine team driving their cars in various tests, I actually think that mentally he might be better prepared and it might put him in a better position than say someone like Yuki Tsunoda who we've seen in 2021 has struggled to get the most out of his car and has struggled with the pressure of being in Formula 1. He already has a fair amount of experience when it comes to working with an F1 team. As mentioned previously, he's worked very closely with the Alpine team and got his chance in 2021 in Austria to make his FP1 debut, which by all accounts went very well. And the team, which included Fernando Alonso, spoke very highly in the way in which he went about the session. Overall, when it comes to the case of Huan Yuzhou, in terms of ability, whilst he's not a transcendent talent who's going to light up the grid, I think he's got the ability to at least hit the ground running with the right guidance and maybe get some decent results if given a decent car. But all of this, of course, doesn't detract from the hard truth, which is that although Huan Yuzhou does have the ability, it's the money and the agenda from within Formula 1 being the first ever Chinese driver that's really got him into the sea. Both Alfa Romeo and people like Stefano Domenicali have really talked up the China aspect in all of this and being the first ever Chinese driver. Because when it comes to China in F1, they have their own Grand Prix and they have over 1.4 billion potential customers for Formula 1, but nothing motivates a country more than a hero in the form of their own driver. Earlier on in the year, there were various rumours which, I must clarify, have not been proven that speculated that Huan Yuzhou's backers were offering Alpha as much as $30 million. Now, Frederick Vasseur later fired back at those rumours, literally calling them BS and saying that performance is always the deciding factor. But then, of course, he would say that because he's the team principal and he has the interest of the team to protect. And actually, for Huan Yuzhou to be picked up over Piastri, if it was all about performance, as he said, and if it was anywhere near $30 million, that's the kind of money that teams get for a title sponsorship deal. So to get anything like that kind of money, along with a decent driver with potential, for a team like Alfa Romeo, you can see why they would take that if they already had a solid bona fide star driver in Valtteri Bottas, who will absolutely deliver for the team. 
The question that I have with most paid drivers is do they have the ability and potential to survive in F1 beyond the money that they bring to their respective team? Because ultimately, when you look at any driver on the grid, whether you think they're a paid driver or not, ask yourself this question. If that driver was hypothetically dropped by their team today, which team would pick them up to improve their driver lineup on driving ability and results alone? So for the sake of argument, let's pick two drivers on the completely opposite end of the scale. If Max Verstappen was dropped by Red Bull, which team would pick him up to improve their lineup? Literally probably every single team apart from maybe Mercedes. However, if Nicholas Latifi was dropped by Williams today, which team would pick him up to improve their current lineup? In that scenario, I really don't see any team except for maybe Haas, and even then that's not really because of Latifi. That to me has always been the question and test that I kind of put up against all of the drivers, and I'm going to be asking that same question at the end of Huan Yuzhou's rookie season at the end of 2022. That's the ultimate test to determine if a paid driver can evolve beyond their money and have a future in Formula 1. And the best example is Sergio Perez, who 10 years ago made his debut as a paid driver in F1, and that same Sergio Perez who when dropped by Racing Point last year was picked up by a championship level team, not because of the money that he could bring, but because of the talent and results that he showed and delivered. So, when it comes to Huan Yuzhou, I think he's done enough to deserve at least a chance in Formula 1. He's not done more than Piastri, but when we have drivers like Mazepin and Latifi in Formula 1, I don't think Huan Yuzhou deserves a C any less than them if you look at the last few years. Like all drivers, I will give them a shot and I will judge them on their performances on the track, their performance against their teammate, and what kind of person they are outside of the car when they still represent their teams and the sport. Yes, we do have another paid driver coming into Formula 1, and yes, a better driver has missed out, but to me, Huan Yuzhou deserves a chance even if it's not over someone like Oscar Piastri. Well, there you have it, another video wrapped up. Again, apologies that this one's coming kind of a week late, but nevertheless, let me know all of your thoughts in the comments box below. I can't wait to see what you have to say. And if you did enjoy this video, then don't forget to give it a like and smash that subscribe button to support the channel. And of course, I will see you in the next one.